my name's Amanda and in today's video we're going to have a little chat all about sewing machines. So over the last couple of months I've had a few requests to do a video all about sewing machines. You guys have been asking some really great questions about what type of sewing machine to get when you're first starting out with patchwork and quilting and also to go through the different accessories that you need to use when you're quilting. So I will try my very very best to answer those questions for you as well as just go through the really basic lowdown of how a sewing machine works and just all the different features that are on a sewing machine. Okay. So first of all, let's start out with the size of a sewing machine. You might see the two that are in the background there. The one right at the back, the pink one, is my quilting machine that I use at the moment. It is a Brother. It is called an Anovus 200 QE. The QE bit just means that it's a quilters edition, which means it just came with all the different quilting accessories and feet that I could put on my sewing machine and use to quilt. And I will go through all of those different things very very soon. The little sewing machine in front is my Singer Featherweight. That is a sewing machine I got for my 16th birthday. It was the first one I ever ever had and it was just perfect for doing really basic sewing at a beginner's level. I actually made my very first quilt on that Singer machine but I didn't actually quilt it on that one. I did it on a bigger one. It is possible to piece together a quilt on a tiny little machine but you are going to struggle because of the size. And what I mean by size is the throat of the machine. And that is this little section just in here. And trying to push through a really thick heavy quilt in that tiny little space is going to be quite hard. So that's why you'll find that on the bigger sewing machines you'll have a larger throat space. That way it will actually give you room to be able to feed your quilt through the machine and not stress and pull your hair out. Now of course the more powerful and bigger the machine is, the more expensive it's going to be. One question that I am always asked is what sort of price range do you recommend for a good sewing machine? Now this all just depends on what you want to do with your sewing machine, what types of projects you want to do with it, as well as the future things that you want to do with your sewing machine. Now I would possibly say a good type sewing machine just sort of for basic sort of things but you kind of just want to move on to things that are a little bit more intermediate or on a harder type level, I would go around $400, $500. Now I understand that is a lot of money to spend on a sewing machine but of course always buy in your price range. Never ever be pressured to buy something that you just cannot afford but just make sure the one that you can afford does everything that you want it to, has all the features that you are looking for in a sewing machine and that you know that the brand is reputable and it has a really good warranty. Now if you're buying a sewing machine that totally intimidates you, i.e. if it's computerized or it has lots of buttons or it has lots of different stitch options, make sure you buy from a dealer that will offer you lessons or some type of instruction of how to actually work the machine because it is always horrible to bring home a brand new sewing machine and be like I have no idea what I'm doing. So just to sum up that little bit, make sure you buy a sewing machine that will fit the needs that you want that is also in your price range. Don't ever feel bullied into buying something that you know is just not what you want or what you need or it's too expensive and you can't afford it. But in saying that, just remember the more that you do spend on a sewing machine, the better the product, the better the quality and the longer it will last as well. So now I'm just going to go through the really basic functions and features of a sewing machine. This is just for those of you who have never used a sewing machine before and want to know what the basic things are. First off, let's start with the hand wheel. It's just the little dial on the right side of the sewing machine that moves the needle up and down. So when you're using the hand wheel, always make sure that you're turning it forwards and never backwards. This is because the sewing machine has been made for the mechanics inside it to always be moving in a certain way. So if you're doing it backwards, the mechanics are going in the opposite way that they're not used to and things can sometimes stuff up. And so because of the little mechanics in the sewing machine, it is always best and it's also advised in your little handbook, well it is in mine anyway, to always turn it forwards. You can also use the hand wheel to position the needle into a certain place in your fabric. So if you want it to be starting at a certain point in a seam or at a point or at a corner, you can easily turn the hand wheel forwards and the needle will carefully lower into the position that you want it to start at. 
Moving on to the tension, the tension wheel is usually at the top of most sewing machines and that is where mine is positioned as well. Now you'll see on mine there is a little grey area with 3, 4 and 5 and then at the top of 4 is a little notch. Now this is the middle ground for the tension of my sewing machine and it's usually recommended not to play with the tension. Just let it be, leave it where it is. Sometimes depending on the thread that you're using and the fabric that you're sewing with, you might have to jiggle the tension around a little bit, but usually you don't need to. This little doll usually deals with the tension of the top thread, so that's the one that you sort of snake through and then it goes through the needle. So let's have a little chat about bobbins. So a bobbin is just a little spool of thread that goes underneath the sewing machine and it becomes the bottom thread of your stitched line. Depending on what type of sewing machine you have, you can either have a plastic bobbin or a metal bobbin and also there are two different types of bobbin areas in a sewing machine. There is a top loading or a front loading and usually if you have a front loading bobbin type area you will also have a bobbin case which is a little case that the bobbin actually sits in and then you insert it into the sewing machine. But the two that I have are both top loading ones so you pretty much just drop the bobbin in on the top, thread it through and then place the plastic sort of cover back on top. Now filling up a bobbin is really quite easy, again depending on what type of sewing machine you have. So when I'm filling a bobbin on my big brother sewing machine, I put the bobbin on the little bobbin loader, thread the machine so it's ready to fill the bobbin. With this particular brother there's a specific way of doing it. Then like all machines I flip the little bobbin over to the right and then I put my foot on the pedal and let it fill. So when the bobbin is filling up, don't touch the thread, just allow the machine to wind the bobbin itself. This is creating its own tension and we don't want to disrupt that because then you might start having loops and gaps in the bobbin thread and then you'll start having issues with your stitching line and you don't want that. So once it's full, the machine will automatically stop. I snip the thread and then I will load it into the little bobbin area. The best way to answer the question of what do I use in my sewing machine, do I use a plastic bobbin or a metal bobbin, the best way to answer that is if the machine came with plastic bobbins, only use plastic bobbins, if it came with a metal bobbin, use metal bobbins. Nowadays with a lot of the more modern type sewing machines, they usually recommend you to use the same branded type bobbins. So obviously I use a brother sewing machine, so I'm always buying brother bobbins. With Brother sewing machines there are actually two different sizes of bobbins. I think one is a 9 something or other and then the one that I use is at 11 and a half and that is how tall the actual bobbin is and sometimes they can also be a little bit more wider. I know, I think it's a lot of the Elna machines, their bobbins are a lot thinner and wider so obviously if you're using a your Brother machine don't use an Eleanor one that has a bobbin that just won't fit in your machine. So that's just one thing that you need to just maybe be a little bit aware of when you're buying a new sewing machine. Just always inquire what type of bobbins do I need to use. You will have spare bobbins come with the sewing machine, but if you are that type of person who wants to have all different colours of the rainbow type bobbins ready to use, perhaps just ask whether you can buy a separate packet of bobbins that are perfect for your machine and you can have them on hand quite easily. So I've only really just touched the surface of bobbins. Pretty much just use the same ones that came with your sewing machine. Always just fill it with one thread. Don't have a white and then refill it with black on top of that because you're just going to absolutely wreck the bobbin. You're going to wreck the sewing machine. Your tension's going to be off and it it's just too messy and horrible. If you are going to sew with different colours, just make sure you get some extra bobbins and use those for your different colours. So we're moving on to another part of the sewing machine and this time we're going to be looking at the feed dogs. The feed dogs are those little spiky bits that are just underneath the presser foot. What the feed dogs do is they just simply feed the fabric through the sewing machine and that's it. Now the feed dogs move in two different ways. They mainly just move in a backwards motion and that is feeding the fabric through the machine in the normal way. And then they'll also move forwards and that's when you're pressing a little button to do a little reverse stitch to finish off your sewing stitch. And that's pretty much all they really do. I will touch back on how you can lower the feed dogs when we have a look at the quilting foot. 
So our next little feature that I think is important for you to know is the presser foot holder. Now this is pretty much that little arm that holds the foot onto the sewing machine. Most machines have similar type presser foot holders. Depending on the brand of your machine, they might be a little bit different in shape to the one that I have on my machine. Most modern sewing machines these days have this type of presser foot holder. You don't have to take off the whole shank anymore and totally replace the foot like you did in the old days. With these ones you just simply have to press the little button at the back and the foot will drop off and then to put it back on you simply lower the foot down and it simply clicks into the little bar that is on each of the feet that come with your sewing machine. So while we're still in this little area let's have a chat about the needle. The type of needle that you should be using pretty much depends on what fabric you're sewing. The type of needle that I use is called a Schmetz needle and I usually use a 9014 size. And that's just a really basic general needle that will do all types of cottons, all weights, all thicknesses. And I use the same size needle when I'm piecing as well as when I'm quilting. You also have the option of using a 70 size needle. I know a lot of people like to use that when they're piecing as well, but it really just depends on what you find works best for you. So most sewing machine needles come with a flat back and a round front, and that's usually how you insert it into the sewing machine. So this is just the way that I change my needle. I use this little tool to unscrew the needle at the needle bar and I'm always holding onto the needle because when it comes out you don't want it to fall down into where your feed dogs are. That could be quite disastrous. So always hold onto your needle as you loosen it off, take it out and dispose of it very thoughtfully because you don't want anyone to be pricking their finger on that. When you're putting a new needle in make sure the flat side of the needle is facing the back and the round is facing the front and then I like to put my finger right at the tip and sort of slightly push it up as far as I can go without it going through my finger and then tightening off just as tight as I can but not too tight that I can't undo it. And that is how easy it is to change the needle. Now knowing when to change the needle is a little bit tricky. I am at a point in my sewing that I can tell when I need to change my needle because it just feels blunt and dull when I'm trying to sew. I can just feel the machine kind of lagging a bit but if you're at a stage where you can't really read the signals from your sewing machine usually change the needle after two or three different projects. Okay so now that we've discussed all of that let's move on to some of the quilting accessories that you can use on your sewing machine. So when I'm just doing any general sewing, piecing and quilting on my brother machine I use a wide table. This is a wide table, this isn't as big as you can get with some brands but this is the one that comes with my machine and it simply just inserts to the side of the sewing machine and it simply just gives you more flat space on the left side of you when you're feeding a quilt through the sewing machine. So the different quilting feet that I'm going to show you all go with my brother machine. Now the shapes and sizes of these feet will differ from brand to brand but they pretty much all do the same job and will give you the result that you want in your quilting. The first little foot that I'm going to talk about is my quarter inch foot. If you've seen any of my tutorials you'll see me using this in those. And like I just said this is a quarter inch foot which means that just to the left of this foot is a little quarter inch guide. So I put my fabric just along that edge and it will sew a perfect quarter inch seam for all of my piecing. So if you're just first starting out with patchwork I would recommend getting a quarter inch foot that way you'll know that every seam that you're sewing is perfect and you don't have to worry about measuring anything or dealing with issues with pieces not matching up. You won't have to worry about any of that if you invest in one of these. The next foot I'm going to chat about is the walking foot and that's the one that looks a little bit strange and weird and, and like one of those things in Star Wars. You know those but yeah it does look a little bit strange but it is really quite easy to use and it's really not that intimidating. So basically with a walking foot you use it for when you're quilting and what it does is it feeds all three layers of a quilt through evenly. It will help prevent the fabric puckering or gathering or anything like that and it will just make everything just glide smoothly. The walking foot also features its own set of feed dogs. So the best way that I can describe it is when the sewing machine is going, the feed dogs from the sewing machine come up, the feed dogs from the walking foot come down and they hold onto the fabric and then they pull it through the sewing machine. And that's what gives you that nice even motion of the quilt going through the sewing machine. So the little arm on the side is just what moves the feed dogs on the walking foot up and down. 
So to attach a walking foot onto the sewing machine, you have to remove the presser foot holder with a screwdriver with the walking foot arm slotting into the needle bar. And then just make sure that you screw it on nice and tight and evenly and you're pretty much ready to go. What I also have to use on my walking foot is a little guide bar and I use this for when I'm quilting lines. On my walking foot there's a little hole at the back and I just insert the bar through that. So then I position it to the space that I want between the lines that I'm quilting and then I just continue sewing nice even lines. So the last foot I'm going to chat about is this one. This is called a quilting foot. It's also known as a stippling foot and you use this when you're doing free motion quilting. This one too looks a little bit strange and weird but I guarantee you it is very very easy to use. So you attach a quilting foot to the sewing machine in the same way you do the walking foot. You take the little presser foot holder off and then you screw it in place with the little arm on the foot resting on top of the needle bar. When you are wanting to do free motion quilting you need to lower the feed dogs and that will allow you to move the fabric anywhere you want. So on most modern sewing machines these days you should have a little switch on the back of your sewing machine that will lower the feed dogs and also raise them when you're finished. Always make sure when you start to sew with a quilting foot to always lower the foot. This one doesn't actually come right down on top of the fabric like normal feet do and you need to lower the foot to be able to engage the tension so you won't have loops and things all in your sewing. And in saying that, because you have complete control in the way that you're moving the fabric, you need to sort of move it and also sew at a very reasonable pace. It does take lots of practice to get it to a point where you feel comfortable with the speed and the movement. So my advice is just to practice on some old wadding and fabric and just move it about exploring new shapes and just getting used to the speed and the handle of free motion quilting. Just always remember that when you're finished with your quilting foot and you put your quarter inch foot back on to bring the feed dogs back up because if they are still down and you start sewing you're going to freak out because your fabric's not going to move anywhere and you're going to think oh my gosh my sewing machine's broken but no it's not you just have to bring the feed dogs back up and everything should be working as normal. I know that from experience. So the last thing I want to chat about is threads. Now it is completely up to you what type of threads that you want to use. You can use polyester or cotton when you're piecing and or quilting. The one thing that I will say about threads is to always choose good quality. Don't go buying like the dollar stuff or the bargain bin sort of threads because they are just horrible. They lint everywhere and they will break easily. They will melt under hot heat. I know that from experience. So always buy really good quality threads. The type of threads that I use are by Gudeman. That is a particularly good brand of threads here in Australia and they're very easy to buy just at Spotlight. And I always personally like to use polyester thread pretty much in everything that I like to do in my piecing and in my quilting. Sometimes I will use 100% cotton but it's not very often I like to stick to polyester because it is nice and strong. Traditionally cotton thread is used in patchwork and quilting but I think nowadays it is completely up to you what you want to use. I don't bother with weight, Gooderman is just a really basic type thread but of course if you would like to buy the proper patchwork quilting type weighted threads then go for it. So I think that's it, that's everything that I want to chat to you about today in regards to sewing machines. If there's anything that you would like to know that I haven't covered in this video regarding sewing machines or quilting on a domestic sewing machine or anything about the quilting tools that I've talked about please leave a comment down below and I will try my very best to answer them honestly and simply as I can. And if you have any special tips about sewing machines or quilting tools or any general comments, please comment down below and share your knowledge with everyone else who will be watching this video. So everything that I've talked to you about today is from my own knowledge. I do not know everything and I will get things wrong. I myself am still learning lots of things about my sewing machine so hopefully the things that I've shared with you today will help you with your own sewing adventures. So just on a side note thank you so much for putting up with my croaky nasally voice. I've been sick over the last couple of days which is why there was no video on Sunday. This video was actually going to be in two parts. I was going to do just a basic introduction to the sewing machine and then a second video doing all the different feet and quilting accessories. But because I wasn't well on the weekend I just decided to mash it all into this one long video. I have no idea how long this is going to be but anyway if you'd like to see more of the things that i do here on my channel don't forget to subscribe and as always thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you another time very very soon bye